Hi everyone, Ace is up here for Pokenerf. Thanks for joining me again. We are going to pick up the action right where we left off, where uh, Bonomo had uh, two bet the limp by Adamo with the King 8 suited. Was a little bit loose at 33 BBs. Uh, we saw a more linear range being used a bit deeper, um, a little bit more of a polarized range as we got a bit shallower, which uh, didn't quite include the King 8 suited at 30 bigs, but at 33 it was pretty close. Uh, he did check the flop uh, and check call it was, and then check, check, turn. I would like to have seen a check on the river. I thought it made more sense given the way Adamo's been playing. Very likely to have a lot of uh, 6, 7, 6, 8, 6, 9, 6, 10, uh, king 6 maybe, etc. Occasionally a jack that uh, checks turn and then values river or hit a queen or goes for thin value as Adamo often does with a 5. Thought it might have represented a great opportunity to go for a check raise here with his hand. Uh, GTO also did like that play, um, but we saw Bonomo went for the lead here around third pot. Uh, and it, GTO was doing that at a frequency as well. And, and that's what we've generally seen is these players sticking fairly close to uh, the GTO style of play. So it's been very educational. And we're going to continue on now analyzing how they do and seeing what we can uh, learn from their play and GTO. 8-5, this, I don't think this is an open, uh, just bring in the solver here and have a quick look, so we're at um, 33 bigs, I think this should be a limp, but we'll have a quick look, 30, small blind, 8-5 uh, basically doesn't raise, so that's interesting. Sort of a small misstep here by Bonomo. Obviously pretty close. 3-5 suited, defend by Adamo. Uh, I imagine we will see a check raise here at a really high frequency. Good efficiency, backdoor flush, backdoor straight, wraps around the 4 and only 5 high. There it is. Nice play. Queen four off, goes for the limp. Looks fine. King eight will check. We could see a bet or a check here. Bonomo does go for the check. I think that's fine. Don't need a lot of protection. Do have some backdoor spades. Uh, and uh, goes for some value on the turn. Around half pot. It's an interesting spot for Adamo here. Wow. Stop it there for a moment. So he does go for the check raise. I think this is a little bit optimistic, but probably fine at a frequency. You just got to be careful with it. The whole card city has had pretty good utility. Obviously, they have a gut shot, an overcard, but additionally, they block some of the stuff that might continue. They do block some of those King X type hands that Bonomo might delay C-bet uh, or might be able to call or check raise with. Um, so definitely having the spade here is really important. I think without a spade, this would probably not be a thing. But with the spade and the gut shot, uh, I think that it's, it's probably fine. And you want to go large. I think this is a bet designed to take it down on the turn. Put some of those thin value bets or delayed C-bets or semi-bluffs by Bonomo in a really difficult spot. So he's gone from sort of 2 million to 1.35. So it's a big raise. And it'll be interesting to see what happens if a spade comes on the river. Because we know Bonomo's not going to fold with top pair once he goes for a delayed C bet. Huh. Yeah, it's a bit of a nasty card for Damo. I He might have to give up here, I think. It would have been interesting if he had got sort of a four of spades or... A the Ten of Spades or something like that, what he might have done. Uh, very interesting hand though, and uh, might just uh, pull out the PO Solver and uh, have a look at that one. I'll be right back. Okay team, we've got the uh, sim finish now. So we've got the limping range here. Of course, Queen 4 mostly limping. Bonomo there, and uh, out of position here, 
we had uh, King 8 off. It is interesting. It is actually 2-betting at a pretty high frequency here. I think that uh, it benefits greatly having a little bit of raw equity just taking the pot down. It doesn't block, obviously, a lot of limp folds, such as the one that uh, Bonomo has. And, and that's generally, you know, if you ever notice a lot of these sort of hands like 10-7, 6-9, uh, Jack-5, Queen-7, Jack-7, you might wonder why these are in here uh, not at 100%. Obviously, if they're in at 100%, it means they're always limping. Since they are a little bit grayed out, it means they are actually two betting. The reason why these hands two bet is, you know, a hand like 710 is it doesn't actually block some folds. You know, if, if your opponent's limped with, uh, you know, jack four, queen three, uh, you know, three four, and that sort of stuff, eight five, you can get some folds straight away. And if you don't, well, these hands still have a little bit of post flop playability as well. So that's why it prefers the solver doesn't mind these hands so much. Um, rather than like a 6-4 off because that doesn't block so many and 4-5 off and 7-2 off doesn't really block so many of the folds uh, and it's just a worse hand. So just keep that in mind. Suited though, you know, Suited will throw in a few more of those weaker hands since that gives you a little bit more playability as well. Just something worth noting, thought I'd quickly mention. So we've got the Queen 7-5 uh, and after uh, Adamo checks it over, the uh, queen four did go for that delay, didn't it? Uh, and we can see that is perfectly fine, like we said. The solver will bet around a quarter of the time, so it is checking quite a lot on this queen seven five board, which seems reasonable. Uh, obviously, you know, queen five and seven is two pair, going to do a lot of betting, and sort of getting up queen nine, queen ten, queen jack, too much value to be had, uh, especially if you're back doors as well. I'm um, just going to be doing a lot more betting, but these... Weaker queens, you want to have a few queens in your checkback range, and some of these weaker queens um, seem to be the ones that make sense. So we see check, check, and then the nine of diamonds. We see the king eight check by Adamo, it's good. Naturally, now we uh, see a little bit of polarity on the turn, some big bets, some small bets. Those top pairs. They want to get some value on this draw-heavy board, so they're going to go for a big size, uh, and obviously some stronger hands like two pairs, etc. Mix in some draws, especially ones that have good utility, like your four six. Uh, a few hands like eight four of spades blocks some continuing stuff as well that Bonomo might have. Has a lot of equity, high efficiency since you're only eight high, but a lot of equity against uh, Bonomo's range plus some block of value. Not too surprising there. Uh, and, you know, some small sort of blocky, value -y type bets with 7x, 9x. Trying to get called by some worse draws, of which there can be numerous. So, again, nothing too surprising here from GTO. Fairly intuitive stuff. Uh, betting big with, you know, your high equity, sort of stronger hands uh, and draws uh, and then efficient runs. And then sort of smaller bets sprinkled across with some of those middling sort of thinner value type bets. Uh, but then, you know, obviously not being too predictable. So uh, having a few stronger hands betting smaller at some frequency and vice versa. So interestingly, we saw this small bet now by Queen 4. It seems that Bonomo could have gone a little bit bigger. We do notice he generally undersizes his bets, I think, or just... Bet sizing for Bonomo seems to be as awesome as he is. And don't forget, we are talking about the, I believe, the greatest earner of MTTs in the world, uh, number one, an incredible player. But he, it just goes to show that, you know, there's still even at the top level, not quite uh, as, I mean, he's still played fantastic. You know, he's checked at the right frequency. He's supposed to bet turn. He's no doubt supposed to call a check raise turn and then check river. So he's played the hand fantastically. But the bet sizes are hard to get right, aren't they? It's one of the things about GTO that can be a little bit tricky. He has gone for the turn bet, but he went small. But we do see it doing that at a frequency. I would like to have seen a slightly larger bet. I think there's a fair bit of stuff that can, kill, can still continue. And we do want to get a bit of protection here. Had he gone for the size that GTO likes, we do see the king eight. As we said, we do see that raising frequency in there. And it is going for the big size that, bon, uh, that Adamo used. If we see a smaller bet, the size that Bonomo actually did use. 
we see a similar type slither. So that is interesting, isn't it? We're seeing this King of Spades that we mentioned has good utility. Uh, and the 8 obviously you know, gives us a gut shot, blocks a few things that uh, Bonomo can be betting and then continuing with. So uh, we do see around sort of a third of the time here it go for this large check raise. And that is just phenomenal that Adamo has spotted this and used the exact size. I think that it's uh, quite impressive. So we saw this sort of big raise here on top of Bonomo's bet. Queen four naturally calling nearly always. Uh, remember he, that Bonomo did have the queen spades as well. Then we saw the ace. It's a kind of a tough card here for Adamo. Uh, had he bet, let's just say that he went 80%. We see that the queen four would be in a tough spot and continue around a, sort of a third of the time. But we do notice that uh, the king eight does actually give up on this ace of clubs. So Adamo has played it uh, pretty GTO savvy. If he had have had a card like, say, the Jack of Spades, now we see the King Eight emptying the clip, and I, I think this would have been Adamo's plan. He's looking for those right runouts. The King Eight has, you know, the King of Spades here, pretty important card. Uh, he might have uh, gone for the uh, big bluff here, but the Ace of Clubs not really the right card for him. Uh, he did have, obviously, the 6 as a gut shot. Uh, the 10 would have been interesting as well. We had got the 10 of spades. We see uh, a lot of betting here. Remember, we, we have the king 8. So, again, we block some straights. And the flushes. We can put a lot of pressure on. So, it's interesting to see this large check raise, hoping to sort of take it down on the turn, but then looking for the right selection of river cards to potentially fire spades being good ones um, just keep in mind i've got the square size proportional to weight off here so we can see king eight at the full frequency but it's not really in there if i click it it's not really in there uh without the spade so it will be bluffing at a pretty high frequency on all these sort of straighty flashy cards but giving up on a lot of other cards the offsuit ones aren't really other ones aren't really in there so it's just all about this king of spades and the utility that it has. And Adamo, Adamo was able to pick that up, which is, like I said, very impressive. Um, but he did give up on the ace. And check. And queen four. Uh, actually, sometimes we'll go for this thin value here. We did see Bonomo check it back. Uh, but yeah, we do see this sort of very small in-position bet, uh, which is uh, kind of fun because it does open the door back up, doesn't it, for, for uh, Adamo to... Uh, you know, potentially get a bit crazy, but uh, not with the king eight. But uh, yeah, a very interesting hand, well played by both players. And uh, I think uh, it's probably about enough analysis on that one. It was a good one to break down and have a chat about. Again, we see the value of the blockers, not just in blocking sort of stronger hands, but also parts of our opponent's continuing range and the role that they play. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's it's about also then it's a check flop bet turn line. So we've still got a fairly wide range that Bonomo can have uh, and then attacking that and then looking for those right river cards, not necessarily always emptying the clip. As we saw, the Ace of Clubs, not a great card here for what Adamo is trying to do. So he, uh, he did just give up, um, which, you know, GTO liked. Uh, had he emptied the clip, Queen 4, I think, may actually have found a call here. Um, and it was supposed to at a frequency. So, uh, interesting hand. Ace four. See the min, four, five call. I believe at 30 bigs, four, five calling here is completely fine. Yep, 3-5 and 4-5. Uh, the 3-4 and 3-6 do fold, just worth noting. Again, these dark brown hands are just ripping 30 bigs, raw equity, uh, lots of uh, offsuit aces and pairs, and then you've got your two-bet isolations and the lighter 
uh, orangey color, lighter brown if you like orange. Um, yeah. Check. Ace four with a spade on this board. I imagine we probably see a fair bit of checking. And probably a probe here by Adamo with the up and down. Makes sense. I think we might see a bit here by Adamo with this combination. Yeah, we do, which is interesting. I mean, he's trying to represent a six or a seven sort of thing, uh, which can value, I imagine. Oh, I mean, obviously a six is trips, a seven might be able to, a 10. He still has some Jack X. Uh, he's not blocking a lot of hands that Bonomo can have that include a spade, numerous high cards and straight draws and gut shots. So I think this is probably okay. I won't pull out the solver for this one. Wow, Bonomo did make the call there. It was a fairly small bet. He was getting a good price and there were still a lot of draws that Adamo can have. I imagine this is really close. This probably does call at a frequency. Seems okay. Uh, we've probably... <laughs> we've looked at so many hands in uh, in uh, PO already. I think we can skip that one. It seemed okay. We can't look at every hand, but just there's just so many interesting hands, aren't there? Uh, so we see the uh, limp here. It was limped, wasn't it? See the limp here with the 5-6 and the check with the queen 4. I imagine we'll see a c-bet here with the gut shot on the a7-3. There's a stab, limp stab, and naturally queen 4 here. We'll probably could even check raise at a frequency, but I think calling is mm, the best. Hmm. This is uh, quite interesting. Adamo's range is a little bit uh, light on aces, isn't it? Because against the limp from Bonomo, he would be at 30, just sub 30 bigs, would be ripping a lot with the ace X's, as we just saw. Having said that, he can still have a sprinkling of ace three, maybe some ace six. Can certainly still have some flushes. And we see this river bet by Bonomo, which looks good. He's really trying to tr trying to target uh, 3x and king highs. And, you know, sometimes even queen high maybe is supposed to call here, given this is a limp pot. Uh, so it's not really as thin as it looks here. I think it's fine. He has gone kind of large, though. But we can have a look in the solver in a moment. What I'm curious about, though, is what Adamo is going to do with this hand. Because he does still have a few flushes and weak aces and full house. Like he does have a few full houses as well. And against this size, now he might feel like he has to check raise bluff it. He could check raise a seven as well, I think, for value. Oh my lord. <laughs> he has just ripped it in. 5.4 million. Oh my lord, what a play by Adamo. He has just ripped in all the beans. 5.4 million with the queen high. Wow. We have to look at this in the solver. I'm going to load up the sim and I'll be right back. Okay, team, here we go. It's finished running. Haven't looked at it yet. Uh, I think this play is... We can maybe do a little bit of a range breakdown when we get there. This is going to be close. I think it might be okay, but uh, I'm not sure about the sizing. It's so big, all in shoving. I mean, we do have some other hands as well that we can choose, like King, the King of Diamonds, for example, the Nut Blocker. Uh, so we're going to have to be careful because we don't have tons of stuff that really want to rip, do we, on the river when we're Adamo in a limped pot. Uh, I mean, we will have some flushes, but sure, but that's not that many uh, full houses. I mean, I guess we do have some ASX as well, but... But let's see what happens. So after checking, we see the 5-6 off bet. Uh, that looks pretty fine around half the time. Just remember Bonomo doesn't have a diamond here, which does make a little bit of a difference. Uh, it would have, I mean, maybe sometimes he even calls the river if he has a diamond, but we'll, we'll get there soon. So the A7-3 uh, limp check. Um, 
Check flop bets for the five six looks good. Small size, and we see the queen four. We did say maybe check raise a little bit, and that is fine. Mostly calling looks good. Does have some showdown value. Obviously the second nut draw, uh, and then we saw the ace of spades. We see a check and the five six will sometimes fire again if it has a diamond. So just remember that, you know, we did mention that diamond does play a bit of a role. We'll block some of the stuff that Adamo can continue with as well as give us some additional equity. The gut shot with the flush draw. Uh, so yeah, that's interesting. Adamo, uh, Bonomo did check it back, completely fine. And that's when we saw the uh, six of spades. And we see the queen four naturally checking. Now the five six we do see is a full value bet. Not too surprising, uh, given that it's a limp pot. We can still hopefully get called by some three x, uh, some king highs, maybe even queen highs at a slither. I have to call here, given the line that we've taken. But what is curious before I click here is if we just stop for a moment and think about this range that. Uh, Adamo has that gets to the river in this way. Sorry, range for out of position. Uh, so it's saying we have a lot of 3x, some of it with diamonds. We have some full houses, which is the ace three. We don't actually have, we have some flushes here. You can see some nut flushes have played this way and a few other flushes. So we've got some king high flushes, queen high flushes, and naturally they're going to want to jam. I imagine then that with your ace threes and your flushes here, these are going to want to shove. So our best bluffs are probably these king highs. And this is what concerns me. If you start using all your queen highs as well, I guess queen four and queen five does block the straight as well. I'm wondering if you can't use the three as well. It might actually be useful to use the three. That way you do block some potential strong hands that your opponent can have. So when we're looking at building this range here, I would say that... What I might just do actually is bring out the old spreadsheet here. So, so I guess the risk divided by the reward. I mean, if it's a five times pot shove, you're risking five to win six. So you would need to have 83.3% equity. Uh, what's that make our value to bluff ratio? So we think 100 divided by 0.833. Uh, did I do that right? 100 divided by, uh, sorry, 83.3. Yeah. So I think it's about a 1.12 value to bluff ratio getting really low. And so if we pop back now for a moment, and just have a look at our actual value combos. You can almost just count them because there's so few of them based on this line. You've got sort of not even a full combo because you might have check raised the flop or bet, you know, done something different, but check raised the flop mostly. So led the river so you've got uh, sort of one, <laughs> two, 
three, maybe four, five for the ace threes there, and six, seven, because it's like a couple of combos and half. Uh, so it's like seven combos that I'm looking at for value. There's just so few. But if you were to put them in, seven value, uh, then we have to calculate this. Something like this. Yeah, it looks close enough. So bluff combos is around six. This is what worries me about Adamo's line. Is It's so hard to come up with, you know, remembering that a lot of those aces would have jammed pre-flop against a limp at sub 30 bigs. And we might take some different lines with our stronger hands. When we get to the river in this way and go for such a huge shove, we don't have a ton of value. We just said maybe only seven combos. So in trying to find bluffs, let's just say we use queen three. I mean, that's already, look at the queen threes. Maybe we want to use the king X, uh, like the king four of diamonds and the king five of diamonds. That's already, look at that. That's already about one, two, three, four, five combos there. Maybe six combos there. So I think you just need to be careful that you're not over bluffing this spot. And I think Adamo probably is. I don't think we'll see these queens make these huge shoves. They might maybe check raise, uh, but not looking at such a savage attack. Maybe a smaller check raise to put pressure on some of those marginal holding, those thin value bets that Bonomo can have and reserve your big all-ins, of which there may be some. I don't. Th I think we will see some big shoves. Uh, maybe the queen three and just you know sprinkling of queen three and king highs. Maybe the king four, king five, and queen three to balance out with the ace threes and the flushes. Uh, and that's probably enough. And then maybe see some thin check raises with seven x, like king seven, queen seven as part of Adamo's river check raising strategy, but for a smaller size, obviously, because you want to get called by some of the other, you know, 6x and 7x and some of those weaker hands. And maybe to balance out that check raising strategy, throw in some of the queens oh, and jack highs as well. That sounds a bit more reasonable. I think Adamo might be overdoing it here with the bluffing and the size that he's gone for with the queen high, but it's probably going to be close. So let's have a look and see if these assump GTO assumptions were correct. So Bonomo went for this size here, which I thought was a little bit large. Remember, we said there was quite a big bet. It does actually use that bet a lot uh, with a diamond, but not without it. So uh, perhaps, again, just a little bit off with the sizing by Bonomo. Without the diamond, you've got to be a little bit more careful. Go for that thinner value. If you do go for the small size, you can see that queen high is actually calling. Some king highs and queen highs actually call now. So you get that thin value. You get that value from all those three X's as well. So that's why it makes sense to go for that small value bet on the river with the six. But the size that he went for is a little bit big. And look at that. Just as we said, uh, you want to go for a sprinkling of your king, king X's and look at how thin Look at how uh, narrow these all-ins are. King jacks, king tens, king nines, king eights, king sixes, king fives, king fours. Just using a sprinkling of them. And the three X we said had good utility with the queen. That's the one that it does actually prefer. The queen of diamonds with a three. But see how it's just too many. If you do it with the queen four, and look, it is doing the small raise with the queen four, queen five. Some jack X's like we said. I know it's it, wow, it's even calling with a little bit of Jack X against a bet. That is interesting. It is using the Queen Eight a bit as well, so you can't really fault Adamo. Um, he's definitely in the ballpark again, as always. It is check raising at a frequency. It's just not going for that massive size because it's reserving that size for the absolute best of the best. So here you're blocking some monsters, full houses, and big flushes, and Blocking nut flushes uh, with the king of diamonds. Uh, so yeah, king of diamonds and the four and five also block straights. Makes sense. So again, very close by Adamo, but perhaps a slight misstep. We are seeing the seven x check raise on the river for thin value, 
And I think that makes more sense to slot a hand like queen four in there. Queen four and queen five in there. And a few other of these weaker hands. Uh, yeah, so... I mean, essentially with the check jam all in by Adamo, he's trying to fold out anything that's not a flush or an ace. So, you know, kings all the way down to, you know, 6x, which is about the thinnest value bet we see. Well, fours will make us fours and fours with a diamond. It's probably the thinnest value we see. King three, slight frequency with a diamond, very thin value. So any everything from, you know, pocket fours or king three all the way up to like kings is what the all-in is designed to fold out. Uh, obviously, it's a limp pot, so if we have a look at the limp range, we can see kings and queens and jacks are in there at a tiny frequency and tens and nines and eights and fours and fives and sixes and the five sixes and all the seven x, uh, king three. These are all the sorts of stuff that, you know, obviously will raise a lot. Pre-flop, the better pairs, but they will sometimes be in there at a limp sub 30 bigs so this is really what this check raise river is designed to sort of put pressure on the big one but you can see that some flushes already start raising the flop so yeah when it goes check 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 you see some flushes on the river now also bet Right, so you either check raise flop or you bet river. But if you do check again, you see that Adamo is pretty deficient in these bluffs, uh, in these value combos. There will still be some that will take this line. I'm sure Adamo will get to the river with flushes in this line. I'm not saying he won't, but I'm just saying that he just does so few combos based on the fact that he sometimes check raises flop, sometimes doesn't even shove river, I would say. <laughs> I do feel like these big bets generally are a little bit bluff heavy by these top pros. They really try to pile the pressure on and use their blockers as best they can in a situation where they think their opponent can never call. And that makes me almost, <laughs> almost want to click call with Bonomo's hand. But having said that, I imagine that you would need a diamond to do it. Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah. So 5-6 will fold to the check uh bet shove line but sometimes call with a diamond around a third of the time almost a uh, quarter just under a quarter it calls with the uh, five six with the six of diamonds looking to take the pot down against those big bluffs we saw from the three x and the king of diamonds and in this case from uh adamo the queen of diamonds with the uh straight blocker as well would have worked uh i wonder if he had a diamond if uh, bonomo would have thought about calling would have been interesting. Obviously, it's pretty hard to call a five times in you know, a river shove, but uh, based on our breakdown and the way Adamo plays, I do think it's a situation where I might click call with the five six with the um, with the diamond. And I wouldn't have been surprised if Bonomo had either. I think he might have been a little bit of suspicious of the, this line and Adamo's frequencies when it comes to these big shoves, these bluffs. It would have been an amazing call if he had made it. And... Wow, that would have been it right there. What an amazing hand. I have spent a lot of time on this hand, but I think it just goes to show sort of the depth that these players are thinking at and the range versus range considerations based on the lines that have been taken and their bluff and value combos and the block of options that are available to them. And you can see why in a sort of bet flop, check turn, bet river line, Adamo is probably thinking Bonomo is going to be light on ace He's going to be light on flushes. He's probably thin value betting. I have a queen high uh, flush blocker with a straight blocker. I want to check raise. I want to get max fold equity. Bonomo might be thin value betting a pair. I'm going to have to five times spot shop um, is the thought process that goes into it. And it does check out GTO wise almost. But again, just looking at the number of combos based on those pre-flop starting ranges, which has really played a big role in the post-flop lines, hasn't it? We know that Adamo is very deficient here in ace-x. So he's really relying heavily 
uh, on the flush component? And would he not check raise the flop at some frequency? Would he five times pot shove at the right frequency? Interesting question. You know, he might. He might slow play more than DTA, which will allow him to more profitably bluff in spots like this. Very possible. Uh, he can be quite tricky. So it's hard to say exactly, but we've seen that it's modeled fairly closely to GTO, maybe just one or two pips off, uh, but just incredible play again and a really interesting hand. So did want to spend a little bit more time on this one and just great play by Adamo, finding a way again, just with queen high to take down another big pot and get himself back in contention here in this heads up battle. So it was a bit long winded that one, I know guys, but hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, just an incredible battle between these two top pros here, isn't it? We are just seeing some really high-level play and, and just no fear at all and uh, a very deep understanding of the game. 8-3 off limps here. Jack 2. Checking. Queen 9-5, two-tone. Probably going to check back here from Bonomo, I guess. Some utility now with the 3 and the 8. After seeing another check, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the delayed stab here. There it is. 1 BB, 250K now, half pot. Since it was limped. Jack 2 obviously going to call now. They have, oh, has a pair. Bonomo in a bit of trouble here. Definitely going to fire on a hard, I think, with this combo. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a really big bet here, actually. What? Oh my, wait, he's gone all in. <laughs> I don't think I can take much more of this. My heart. <laughs> he's just ripped in 5 million. He's ripped in 5.5 million. He's just done what Adamo just did last hand <laughs> with eight high. 5.5 million. He has just ripped it in the effective stack. I don't know if Damo can call with Jack 2. He's got trips. <laughs> I think this is actually okay by Bonomo. I think this is actually as crazy as it looks. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a thing with this combo. Delay C bet Rip River. Based on this line by Adamo again, uh, it seems he's very deficient in strong hands. Remember, he has not uh, ripped sub 30 well 30 ish bigs pre yeah i think the problem is is that he will actually have a fair bit of deuce x that is one problem once he takes this line and check calls turn but can he call this rip with a deuce without a heart i think if he has a jack of hearts he's gonna definitely call i would i, I have a hard time folding from Damo seeing this this line again just going back from what i was saying before pros in this spot, I feel like maybe, you know, we saw how careful you have to be about over bluffing. To suddenly go check flop, bet turn, five times, five and a half times pot river. We just saw based on a MDF equilibrium type strategy, you have to be careful. You can't have too many bluffs because you don't have enough value. Uh, unless, you know, I mean, I'm not saying Bonomo could not check back uh, some really strong hands here. He could have limped. You know, we saw before in his limping range on the button, there are some strong combos. He could even have queens at a frequency. You know, obviously it's very few combos based on the small limping frequency and the fact there's a queen out there already. But he will have some flushes that might check back for sure. Uh, he might even have some strong deuces that, that can do this as well, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure though. Uh, I think it's okay at a small frequency with some of these combos. What I'm curious about, though, is if Adamo should call or not. I think it's hard for him to call without a heart. And I'm also curious about this sizing. Is it better to have a big heart or a small heart? That's what I'm curious about. Hmm. Let's have a look. I'll uh, load it up in PO and I'll be right back. Okay, team. I've run the simulation. Input all the data. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's uh, quickly run through the ranges again. Limping range. As we said, that tiny frequency of queens. Nines. The, uh, the traps that limp in hopefully get a shove from Adamo around 30 bigs. Remember, we've got the absence of pairs and ASX largely, although it's not as significant, obviously, in this context because we have a lot of deuce X and a lot of flushes for Adamo that are in there. 
So on this queen nine five board, after Adamo checks the eight three offsuit, we'll fire around half the time. Bonomo checked, which is the main. Uh, well, slightly the main was the main, which is good. And we saw the deuce of clubs and we see mostly deuces checking again makes sense we still have some you know strong hands a lot of 5x still have uh, some queen x you know and like we said some flushes will check you know especially some of these king highs and stuff queen uh jack highs some of them will check back on this board and uh try and get value on later streets if they make a strong hand um they actually still have a little bit of showdown and a limp pot as well remember so maybe gto having quite a lot of flushes here will give bonomo that room he needs to go for this big shove with his hand we do see the 8-3 here go for a delayed c bet uh after after adamo checks i imagine yep there it is around half the time so if you didn't bet flop with it you can bet turn makes sense after seeing another check it likes to go sort of smallish, which is what we saw Bonomo do. Naturally, the deuce X's are mostly calling. Oh, there's actually raising a fair bit of deuce X here, which is interesting. Hmm. Not a lot, but there's a decent frequency. It's interesting that the equity is not that high, but it's still check raising at a decent frequency. I wonder if it's just trying to clean up its equity from all these like marginal hands, fold out a few 5x's. It's kind of a semi-bluff, isn't it? Trying to clear out some 5x. Trying to clear out some of these draws and more marginal delayed c-bets. It's quite interesting. Obviously can still have some two pairs. Some queens that want to do this for value. Completely uh, standard. And uh, some big draws, naturally. Even some 9x can do this. And we have seen Adamo go for this sort of value with these middling pairs for sure, both players. But uh, yeah, mostly calling with the deuce x. And that is what Adamo did with the jack two. Two of hearts on the river. We do see a little bit of leading here around 20% of the time. And I think it's not unexpected given how much deuce x... We'll play this way from Adamo. We can see it here. He's pretty do sex heavy. And that entitles him then to, you know, lead a few bluffs. Uh, and uh, he did check this time though, which is what this Jack 2 does a lot. It's interesting that we'll bet a bit more with the heart. I, that might be because it expects to see less bluffs. And that might be perhaps a hint that we do <laughs> we do see the 8-3 look at this with the heart we see it rip at a pretty high frequency this dark brown is all in five times pot shove it's doing it eight percent of the time in bottom most shoes and it does like to do it with the 8-3 now what i was curious about i thought this might be a thing it is doing it a lot it's betting a lot but it's actually ripping it quite a high frequency here this is just phenomenal again by these guys this is mind-blowing the bottom has picked up on this line he's played it fantastically well and he's yeah, he's just done a great job with his hand. Uh, but what is interesting to me is that if we have a look at some of these big bluffs, yeah, it is actually finding good utility out of these small... So we still have some flushes which want to jam. This is what I was curious about was sort of this high card value with the heart. So it's saying like a jack of hearts and a ten of hearts. It's really not that fast with the hearts on this occasion, is it? It's really not. It's looking. It's not looking for those big hearts. I guess again, if we consider that preflop range for out of position, just pop back for a second. There is a lot of jamming with these bigger hearts. So I guess oh, there's still a lot of the kings and queens though that 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 can I guess be in there. Uh, that might not too bad against a limp. There's a lot of this stuff as well, though. Just, just interesting. 
This is quite a uh, interesting hand, isn't it? So just going for this big shove using the 8-3 and 8-4 delay C bets. 7-4, 7-3. I mean, it's really shoving, it's really betting, at pretty, one third of the time it's betting, but it's, you know, 8% it's using this big size and it's using an overpot, another 15, 14%. So you've got around 20% of these huge bets coming in on the river uh, and you're using a lot of these sort of delayed weaker C bets with a heart blocker. The heart, not surprisingly, being the key. Uh, and you can have some nine deuce for full houses as well. Obviously, you've still got some of those slow played flushes that we spoke about. Smaller bets with your thinner value. Some Queen X. Some Deuce X is going for that sort of medium to big size. Not really going for the shove, going for sort of an overpot. Bit suicidal for the shove uh, since you're blocking the main, most likely calling hand is... Well, the nine Deuce, I guess it is. Hoping to, get, hoping to run into a flush or the other Deuce. That makes sense for the, as a big bet. Some of these innocuous two pairs that get there. Queen two, nine two. I, I guess Bonomo does have a few of these monsters uh, that limp in and get there in this fashion. That check flop, bet turn, bet, and then can go for max value river. Hoping to get paid off by a flush. Or just have a strong flush and get paid off by a two or a lower flush. And that really does entitle him to open up his bluffing range, I guess. If you imagine we do the same sort of drill that we did before looking at the value to bluff ratio. We do have a few more combos here this time. He's got a lot more of this sort of ace two, king two, queen two, nine two. Uh, queen two is over here as well. More deuce x here. We've got a lot more of these flushes. And so when we're looking for these, some of these bluffs here, there's a lot of flushes here. Can start to introduce some of these weaker hands that have some little showdown but good block of value. And then uses some smaller bets as well. Uh, some sort of blockish, smally type bets, thinner value. Mix in a few strong hands when you do that as well, like the King-5. Uh, just interesting. We don't actually really have that many combos to choose from that have a high heart. So I guess that's why it's using these ones because a lot of these hands like your... Uh, I'm just trying to find like a King... A king three with a heart actually bets flop sometimes. And then if it does get checked to on the turn, it checks. So in a line that goes check and then bet. So you can imagine in this scenario that it gets checked to Bonomo by the river. He's just going to check back with king high for value, um, you know, for showdown. So that's that's just what I was trying to discover that why we don't have sort of any bigger hearts in our range. It's because after checking flop, they will sometimes bet flop. And so checking reduces the combo amount of combos, but then they won't bet turn. So now the number of combos of these big hearts is even lower. And so actually when you get to the river and it runs out as a flush, you actually don't have that many... You can see you have a tiny bit of like a king six or something that might do it. Uh, but you can see the king highs actually just check for showdown. And queen highs is top pair. And so then you've got your jack x's, which is interesting. So that, that's sort of was what I was looking for. So you jack x. Uh, sorry, we still have to see a check from Adama. Yeah, so your jack x. If that's a nine, that's a pair. Your ten jack with the ten of hearts. What's that doing? Yes, it's it's kind of taking the showdown, isn't it? With these sort of high jack high combos. What about like an uh? Have like an 810. See, 810 is about where it kicks in. Sort of says, hey, I don't have any showdown. I've got decent blockers with the 10 and the 8. Obviously, the 10 of hearts being key. 
obviously this hand does not have a really high frequency again. If we square it proportional to weight, it is in there at a slither that could have done this. And so since you don't have that many combos that, you know, check flop and then bet small turn, you can be pretty selective about these sort of weaker sort of seven and eight high heart ones and some ten, some 10 high and then Jack's starting to get sort of in showdown neighborhood and you don't queen's top pair and then you don't really have any kings that get to the river in this way so that's why we're seeing this selection of hands down here as bluffs delayed c bet weak hands good utility blockers and the high efficiency since you're only sort of seven high eight high even six high <laughs> yeah and occasionally uh, that's a flush there I was going to say occasionally it might be four high but uh, nope it's three four it's not quite doing it it will uh, it will bluff, bluff bet at a decent frequency but use a smaller sort of bet again you have to be careful with your uh, frequencies keeping in mind your value component that's going to use this big huge bet Best of your deuces, your flushes, your full houses. In a limped range on this sort of uh, queen nine five two two board, there are a few combos that Bonomo can play with. So uh, good on him for making this amazing play. Unless Adamo calls, and this is the last hand. What do you think he's going to do? He's got trips. Five times pot all in. Click the call button, Adamo. Do it. He's looking. He's like, well, I don't have a heart. I know Bonomo can check flushes and he's folded. Look at that. The eight high bluff. Five and a half times pot in your face, Adamo. Get you back for the queen four. Loving what we're seeing here. This is just an incredible display of talent. These players are just all over the GTO. A delayed C bet by Bonomo and then a all in five and a half times pot shove. GTO likes it. I like it. What do you guys think? Just amazing stuff. We'll wrap it up there. Some incredible hands really picking them apart has hopefully helped you get a good feel for the fundamentals of gto and even beyond we're just breaking it down at that really deep level here we're seeing these the use of these blockers and these tactics uh and uh the frequencies and how you try and spot your best value and then integrate some bluffs into that and what we're really looking for with those bluffs that make the most sense that have the highest efficiency and we've just seen it displayed perfectly by bonomo and very close to the hand before with that queen high bluff by adamo it's just the highest level of poker we're seeing. If you're able to follow along right now and understand these concepts and stay with me, I know some of these hands have been a little bit long-winded, but well done because you are really getting a really deep understanding of GTO, how it all fits together and how to execute it in game. Uh, these players are just doing a great job at it and uh, hopefully that's my goal for you as well. And for myself, I'm enjoying it as much as anyone else, else out there. This is just a, a great, great heads-up battle. Honestly, the best I've seen uh, in all my years. 20 odd years as a poker coach uh, so hopefully you're enjoying it too and i'll be back with more action in part four this was aces up for poker nerve thanks for watching